hey everybody this is melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and me crafty scrapper here on youtube and instagram welcome back to my channel if you are not a subscriber go ahead and hit that subscribe button the little bell gives you a notification every time i upload a new paper crafting video i would appreciate it so much thank you for being here to all of my already subscribers i love you and thank you so much for being here Today is another episode of M's Scrapbusters. So if you make this project today or any of the past projects, this is week nine, I believe. Yes, week nine and or episode nine. And if you make any of these projects, please use the hashtag MS Scrap Busters, M's Scrap Busters so that I can visit and like and comment, um, whether it be here on YouTube or on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, just make it public so I can view it and I will try my best to get to it. I am a little behind on that right now because of some personal things going on in our lives. Um, some travel, ministry travel things and then um, my husband's health. Um, so if you're a prayer warrior, I would appreciate prayers for him. Um, he's been to his doctor and he really hasn't found anything. So <clears throat> we are having a little bit of an issue, um, with his health. So I'm behind on getting to everybody's and, um, giving them thumbs up and likes and commenting on their M Scrap Buster stuff. So if I haven't gotten to yours, please don't be offended. I will get to it as quickly as I can. I'm going to try this next week in all of my downtime to go through while I'm sitting on the couch with my tablet and go through and find everybody's hashtags and um, like their M Scrap Busters takes that they have um, done with what I have made. Today, we are going to make a little booklet that has a tuck spot and a little notepad. How cute is that? This one, I also put um, a tab on. Uh, the thing that took me the very longest ever, and my subscribers that have been with me for a long time will not be surprised by this, is the decorating. Ugh. I mean, I love how it looks. I love how pretty <laughs> the final product is, but the decorating is like, oh, sometimes to me. I love putting things together. I love coming up with new things and new ways to use scraps. Um, but I could just, I could belt them out all day long if I didn't have to decorate them. The decorating takes me the longest. But if you want it to be pretty and go into your journals, or if you wanted to, this would be great for snail mail. I mean, look, it's like a tab. It's like a file folder, but just put upright. But this would be great for snail mail if you wanted to send this to somebody and put, you could even put a gift card here and this could be little quotes or something you could put little quotes in here for them uh get way get well stuff and i mean they're po the possibilities are endless with this but it does look like a little um file folder when it's turned sideways so you could even decorate it sideways if you wanted to and do the um notebook this way but for today's project we're going to make it like a little booklet there okay so, first off, you need a bigger piece of scrap paper. Or if you've got some eight and a half by 11 or 12 by 12 um, scrapbook paper or cardstock that you just know you're not gonna use, you could use it for this, cut it down and use it for this. And then, um, if it's not a pattern that you like, you could collage over it before you fold it and start making this. So that's another way to use up your eight and a half by 11 and 12 by 12 cardstock that you just really don't care for. All right, so here is a piece. We are not measuring. You can make these any size you want. But for those who want a measurement, 
because I have a comment every time. I really would just like the measurement of what you, how you use this. Okay, so this one that I've already made off camera, the little prototype. Y'all know me, I'm on, I'm on the fly most of the time and y'all are blessed to get a prototype today. Um, this one is seven and a half. So this scrap piece of paper was seven and a half inches long by five and three eighths tall. So this one is five and three eighths tall by seven and a half long. Okay. And that is awesome to tuck into. Let me get a journal here my junk journal that I always get out for y'all. This one is super, super, super easy as far as size wise to get tucked into journals and things. Look at that, how cute. Um, it could even go in a belly band if you wanted it to. Now this belly band's not wide enough, of course. I wanna show you one that can go in a belly band that won't go in. All right, secretarial pocket, look how cute. So see, you could make them even bigger, taller to go into your pockets in your junk journals. Or like I said, great for snail mail. I mean, for anybody that is sick or just had a baby, you could make it baby themed and put some baby um, store gift cards in here and some little advice to the mother. Oh my goodness, that would be so cute. Yes, like do little quotes um, and things for mothers. Oh my gracious, so cute. Um, teacher gifts, school, the school year's coming up, y'all. This would be great for that. And you're making it out of scraps. The only thing that's really going to cost you money is whatever you tuck in, like their gift or whatever. So cute. So, this one is taller and is wider. Yes, is wider um, by about a half an inch. Okay, so we're looking at... Uh, seven and three-fourths, almost seven, seven and three-fourths by seven inches tall. Is that right? Yes, seven inches tall. I lost my eyes there for a minute. Okay, so I'm wanting, yeah, I don't want it skinny. I want it wider. So I'm going to fold over, and we've got this circular brown um, pattern paper on the outside. And then we've got this pretty mustard color uh, pattern on the inside. And we are going to cover most of the front, so we're good there. Um, if you're not a um, fan of your pattern paper that you use, pattern card stock that you use, of course you can cover up the back also if you want to. You could totally collage this and it would be so pretty. So, uh, I am working on brown paper. I'm looking in my brown paper on my brown non-stick. <laughs> oh, well. I'm going to be using some glue, so that's why I've got that down there. Um, and I really want this to be the outside, so I don't want to turn it inside out. Okay. Um, now, you want to figure out, do you want to round your corners and I'm all into the rounded corners right now so that is what I'm gonna do and I'm rounding it with the one fourth inch with my We Are Memory Keepers corner chomper and I am using Walnut Stain Distress Inks for my aging on the edges and I'm going to distress uh, front, back, spine, and inside front, back, spine. Okay, because you need that dimension on this. Okay, so there's front, back, outside, and then I'm just gonna flip it inside out. And I'm gonna ink 
inside. And do that spine also. This also helps you if you want to stitch around the edges. It helps me anyways because I'm a horrible seamstress. Um, that word is not even really anything that needs to be in my title whatsoever. Um, if you are a wonderful person with a sewing machine, you're laughing hysterically at my stitching that I did around this. Um, look how tight that is. <laughs> it's comical. It's so tight right there. Um, but I do like my little three reverse lines that I did right there. But anyways, it helps me when I have it inked. So see, look at that. Look at how much dimension that gives you right down the center. Just from ink, y'all. Love it. Okay. Now you need to figure out, this is so super easy as far as the mechanics of the base. So super easy. So you need to figure out what you want to put here as your little tuck spot. Okay. So I just get a piece of scrap of some kind and I just get out my handy dandy bowl that I've got lots of little snippet scraps in. That would go, but I think it's too matchy-matchy. Let's get something that's not so matchy-matchy. Now, one of those tickets, eh, that's too little for that one. That would have been good on that one, too. If you do a small one, little tickets would be great to turn sideways and make for that tuck. Let's look here. I want cardstock because I want it... Um, Sturdy, so I need to go past all of my papers that I've got in here. I might not have a piece that's tall enough for that. Wait, wait, wait. Look here. Those are cute. They're not really something that's going to go with it. Oh, that will. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. All right. Let's put away my scrap bowl. Y'all, I keep all the scraps. Since I started the scrap busting um, weekly challenge, I keep all the scraps. <clears throat> Nothing gets thrown away. Maybe if it's like the size of my pinky nail, it gets thrown away. Other than that, no throw away. Okay. So this is a good, nice piece of cardstock. It's almost chipboardy feeling, but that's going to help um, if you put a lot of weight in this. It's going to help with that. All right, so with this one, I tore the edges, and you know what? I think I'm going to tear the edges of this one, too. So it is thicker, but I think I'm going to tear it because I just, I like the look of that. All right, so I'm going to tear and give myself a little um, rounded corner there. And then I'm going to kind of pull out there so it doesn't go in on the bottom. All right, I think I need to go a little more in here at the top there. Yep, that works. All right, and then I'm going to round that back corner like so. And then get my walnut stain and ink all around this, even on the back side. Okay. Oh, that's cute. Very cute. All right, I am using my eighth inch score tape. Um, whatever kind of double-sided tape you have will probably work. Um, and liquid adhesive works, but you know me and pockets pockets and tucks, I try my best to use eighth inch score or some kind of score tape because I do not drive glue straight like mom says. I do not drive glue straight. And let me get this off. When I um, put liquid glue on the backs of my pockets and tucks, they tend to, the glue spreads, so then that 
spreads up in here and doesn't give me enough room to tuck my stuff in. All right, on this tuck, I forgot I was talking. I'm going to pull back my adhesive from this front bottom corner here. Pulling that away because I like to have some room for my items to come on down to the bottom. It gives you a little bit more room when you, you're using, when you're making a tuck. Okay, so there is my tuck put down. I forgot to say that I got this idea. Now she does all kinds of scrap busting and um, she has done these similar to these. Um, I'm putting my own little twist on these, but she's done similar to these on quite a few of her videos. Uh, her name is Corey Damon, D-A-H-M-E-N. Um, she has gobs and gobs of series of scrap busting um, videos. And I was watching a few, just, you know, how you lie in bed and you just watch video after video and YouTube uh, recommend something and you go, oh, that looks neat. So I started watching that and it was her channel and she has loads and loads of scrap buster ideas. So this was in one of her, um, one similar to this was in one of her videos. And of course I will link her, um, channel in my description box below because she was, um, someone that influenced this. So I always want to give credit where credit's due. Um, so there is my little tuck and see it's off the page there. Now, if you don't like that on your tuck, go ahead by all means and go all the way to the end of your um, tuck with your adhesive. All right, now for the notebook. Um, you can use any kind of paper. Um, I've got some ledger paper here. I've got some digital papers that, um, that look like book page, but on the back, see, I had, um, copied them on cream color or like an ivory color cardstock or not cardstock, oh, copy paper. And so some of them, you know, don't have the print on the back. And I use that in this also. How many pages did I put in this one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I put eight pages in that one. So you can use whatever you would like and they don't all have to be the same length. Uh, they pretty much need to be the same width, just so they don't go over, you know, your line in the middle. Uh, those are a little short. That's the same size I used for that. And these were scraps off of a journal that I had made. Uh, scraps off the pages that I had put in some journals. So I thought that was very good to use in this. Let me find some dyed paper over here in my stash. There is some. All right, so what I do, because you know, we're not really measuring our bases, is you just kind of half-hearted measure out how wide you want it. And I just make it with my thumbnail. And then I wanna go about, give me about three-fourths of an inch before I get to the bottom. So that's where I want that cut. Let's trim it. And then I can trim all of my other pieces the same. Okay, so I've got that one and then I can trim this one. And y'all, this, um, this week's scrap busting is not timed. You don't have to time yourself. You never have to time yourself on these. Please don't, you know, put any undue pressure on yourself when you are participating in 
an M's Scrap Busters Challenge. Just, you know, you don't have to do that. This is some straw paper I thought would be very cute in there. Um, you never have to time yourself. Please don't think that just to participate, you've got to time it and it's got to be under 30 minutes. It does not. My very first one was a timed one, and I don't really think I've <laughs> timed them since then, just because I was like, Psh, I'm not gonna put any undue pressure on myself or anybody else. So just don't worry about it. You do not have to time yourself. All right, so let's get some like-sized papers trimmed here. All right, for this one, I have 10 sheets cut, and I think I want to trim them down just a touch on the side because, see how much room I have on this one on both sides? I like that room, especially if you start adding things to it. So let's just trim this just a little bit. All right, so that works great like that. All right, and like I said, if they are not the exact same widths, it's okay. You just want to make sure that they are going to fit nicely between your spine here and the outside over here, okay? So, I'm going to get them all to the top here. And I'm going to get a paper clip and put over the top and then a bulldog or a binder clip and put on the side. Now we need to make our little topper and you can totally make a decorative topper. That would be very, very cute. Or you could just, um, put on the top like this. You could glue this or just, staple it use the tim holtz tiny attacher that would be cute to do that on that part now i stitched it and i will stitch this one also i'm going to use some of this straw paper and if you're going to be using um, a sewing machine of course you don't want to get too thick of material to make your topper because it's got to go through your material and your papers, so that's why I'm not really using a piece of cardstock with this one because I put a few more pages in this little notepad than I did there. I want this one to come down a little bit further than this one did, but I'm still gonna stitch right along the top. So I'm gonna take this off really quick. I'm going to just kind of eyeball how low I want it. All right, and then just make myself a thumbnail measurement. And I'm gonna cut this. Okay, and then I'm going to figure out how wide I need it. So I'm just really barely going a little bit wider than what the actual paper is before I trim it. And there. All right, then you're going to, however you want it to um, fold over, if you want it even front and back, um, you could totally make a pocket on this side of this one and tuck that down in there and not permanently put it in, but I permanently put it in. I like how it looks. Um, I'm going to rough up 
the straw paper a little bit here. And then ink it with my walnut stain and get those little fray pieces everywhere, which is so nice. Uh, not really sure why I'm inking the back because it's not gonna be seen, it's gonna be glued down, but nevertheless. All right, so there you've got your little topper. I think that's so cute and it's got enough room that you can decorate it too. So I'm gonna pull this like that and I'm going to ink my spine or my fold, sorry. Yep. Cute. Ugh, my fingers are not going to work today, y'all. All right, I think I'm going to round my little front corners. Oh, even cuter. Love it. All right, I'm going to stitch. I'm going to keep this in place until I get it under my... Um, sewing machine arm and I'm just going to stitch right along the top of it with a straight stitch. I did kind of a wonky stitch here but I'm going to try my best to do a straight stitch on this one and be right back. So anybody want to ask how that straight stitching went? Anybody? Anybody out there? Is this my comb? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the first stitch I did went all wonky and tight so then I went across it with some even wonkier zigzag stitching. So there you go. There is your sewing tutorial for the day. Um, you will never ever see my sewing machine or see me stitch on camera because like I said, I'm horrible at it. And another thing is my table is tiny. So I don't have the room to show you my sewing machine and my stitching and all that. Anyway, all right, so on this side, I didn't reverse stitch, so I tied a knot, and I think I'll tie one more. And then I'll trim off those thread tails. Okay, I just love how shabby chic that looks. I love that hanging off. See those threads? I just love that. If you don't like that, don't worry about it. Don't do it. <laughs> oh, me. Yeah, if you don't like that, do it correctly. Don't do it like me. <laughs> and do it however you would like. Now, to tape this in or adhere this in, I am using score tape. And then I will also use some liquid adhesive. I'm gonna use score tape close to my papers because, you know, score tape's not gonna come off and ooze onto your paper. Liquid glue will. So I use the liquid glue toward the top if it will ever decide to come out. The liquid glue goes up toward the top so it is not close to my papers and it doesn't get any of my papers to sticking together. All right, and then you just find your center and make sure of where you want it toward the bottom. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna hold that down just because it is pretty thick up here where the liquid glue is. So I'm gonna hold that down for a few seconds. Get off any excess. There we go. All right, so there is our little booklet, our tuck, 
And now to make it look like that file folder, you want to cut um, or use a tab that you've um, cut out with your silhouette or your, um, what's the other thing, Cricut. <laughs> Oh, my mind is gone. I've had just so much going on that I just keep losing my words. All right, I'm just trying to find a little piece of scrap to punch out. Is that work? To punch out my tab. It's wide enough that I'm folding my cardstock over. This is some more thick cardstock. I think this is 49 market. Very thick cardstock. Get my phone folder. I would just rather not even have this. I need to pull it off because I always pull it up to look and make sure that I'm cutting the tab the way I need to. And you just leave that little space at the top Woo! It went flying. You punch that out. And then you have a double tab. If you did not watch my Roxy's video last week and didn't see the light bulb moment whenever I was watching her video and she showed us that, I'm like, I've had this tab punch forever. And I did not realize, hey, you just do that, dummy. And you get a double tab. All right, so you can put your tab anywhere you would like. I like having mine at the bottom. You could put it up here toward the top, which that does look good. But I like here at the bottom. So I'm going to put on my tab with some liquid glue. And if you have some old file folders sitting around, this would be a great project for those and you wouldn't even have to make your own little tab to put on either. Cute. Now the ones that uh, Miss Corey made did not um, look like a file folder to my knowledge. I don't remember it looking like a file folder. So this is my little twist on it to put the little file tab on them and give them even more character. I like that. Look on the back. Make sure you're as straight as you possibly can be and I'm not on that bottom. So I usually always close it and make sure of how that needs to be on there. And see, it still looks. There we go. That's better. All right, does not have to be perfect, Melanie. Go on, go to the next thing. Uh, now it is all about decorating, because look at that. You have got your little tab on, you can put some kind of wording on there. You've got your notepad in there. You've got your little tuck spot. And then now let's do some decorating. And I think on this one, I put some washi tape, just regular washi tape on the edges. This one, I think I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the floral. This one is already off. I've got these little stamps up here that come off of my rolls and I'm like, uh, you need to be using those, sister. So that's why I've got them up there. I'm having to hold this really close to my eyeball so I can see where the next one is. And I'm going to try my best to use this as my little spine cover. Now, it's not going to cooperate too good. Here we go, here we go. I'm even good with the torn. That's good, that's good with me. I'm gonna fold it over the edge. I'm gonna pull off one more 
just to see where I want this to go. Oh yeah, cute. All right, so putting these on just, I mean, it does not have to be straight as an arrow. <laughs> what that I make is straight as an arrow. I mean, really, truly. Nutting. Nutting, nutting, nutting. But this does have the little circle um, pattern on it, so you can kind of go along with that. All right, and we are folding over and folding over to make a little shabby chic reinforced spine there. Cut that little tail off. And we could even use these to put that one like it's been actually cut off of the bottom. Cute. Oh, I'm not using my sticky scissors. Y'all should have yelled at me. All right. Um, let's get, of course, I'll do some more decorating. So, see, that gives you, if you want to use washi on the edge, that gives you some reinforcement to that spine if you're using just paper or something or like a thicker paper that's not chipboard. That gives you some extra help on that spine. I'm going to cut out one of our words. Mom did this as a freebie over on our blog at scrapbookingwithme.com. So if you want to pick up those cursive journaling word freebies. You can go to our blog and search that. And you can get to our blog through our www.scrapbookingwithme.com website. It'll be over in the, I think, left-hand corner. You can click on blog. All right, I'm putting that. It's a pretty big word and covers most of the most of the tab but i'm going to pull it down to the bottom where it's kind of flush with the tab punch out get off that excess glue and make sure that i'm okay with how it's lining up that's all right okay and then i'm going to Ink that there. Um, let's see. Let's add some stuff to our tuck, which I have like the perfect stuff, y'all, um, that I used in that one. And I think I'll just do that. And see, this gives you enough room that if you had something a little taller here, you could get it on down in there. Um, if that was all the way, that's about as far as I could get the papers. But with it being not all the way to the end, I can get these papers even further down into my tuck. So you can decorate the inside if you want. Um, if I had a little ticket, that would be cute right there. Let's see. I've got my handy dandy bag of cutouts that Miss Betty Renfro did for me over here, and that's what my rattling is. I'm just looking down in here and seeing if I've got a ticket or a piece of little ephemera or something that would go there. That is very pretty. I think I'll put that in there. Ooh, that looks good there, too. Yep. Thank you, Miss Betty. I think I'll decorate my tuck. Even though my tuck is already pretty. 
I love that. I don't know. I don't want to cover that up. Let's just tuck it in there. Um, let's see here. Look at all these big ones. I love this. Oh, that little ticket's pretty. Oh, that's pretty. I like it. I like it. Ooh, I like that. Okay. That's going on there. I'm going to leave this out. Maybe I will use some of it for my front. Let's see. Let's ink the edges. Ink this. You could um, put a little message on that little ticket to whomever you send this to or uh, put a title on the little ticket of what you're going to be journaling about in this for your journal that you tuck it into. So any kind of little decoration you use, even if it's plain, you can um, fancy it up any way you would like. Now look, I just used this glue bottle on that and it's stuck. Clean off the tip. There we go. I think I still need something little on this tuck space. I want that to show because it's so pretty, but something up here maybe. All right, let's add this little ticket here. Oh, there comes the thunder again. We have had nothing but storm the last two weeks. I feel like every time I get on here, I'm telling y'all, oh, sorry, it's storming. I mean, it's nothing that I've done really, intentionally. I don't look at the forecast before I do my videos, but it seems like every time I get on here, I'm gonna round two of these corners, just two. Every time I get on to do a video, it starts storming. Okay. Yes, I like that. Very cute. Let's put that on. See, I told you, the thing that takes the longest with this is the decorating. It's just me, I know, because I just don't really care for decorating. I like my stuff plain Jane. But I want it to be pretty to show y'all. So that's why I decorate it. All right, so I got the inside decorated like I want. Get some more excess glue off of this. Great tuck spot. Even more stuff could go in that. All right, the front. Cute. I love all this. Let's see if we've got a bigger something to put on the front because I want to cover up this busy, busy, busy pattern paper that we got going on. Cute. And let's find some trim or something because on this one I put the washi and then I've got this lace piece here and then I also put cheesecloth back behind that. So let's find maybe put some cheesecloth behind it I love that let's see hmm let's spread it out some more because I don't want it perfect looking I want it Shabby chic looking. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Whoops, I almost knocked off something that I want to use. I need some this way and that way. Stretch it out some. Oh, I like that. Okay. 
um, if you do not like the cheese cloth look, cheese cloth, <laughs> cheese cloth look, by all means, use whatever else you would like. Do not have to use the same materials that I use in my scrap busters challenges. Use what you have. Use the scraps that you have in your stash. Always. Never, ever, ever have to use exactly what I use. All right, I'm going to round these corners. And then I'm going to ink with my walnut stain. Okay, and then I'm going to put it on. I think I'm going to put it on straight. I was going to put it on at a little wonky angle. I mean, who knows? By the time I get it down, it'll probably still be at a wonky angle, even though I tried to put it on straight. And I'm going to use my Fabri Fix to get those corners down really good. And then come up to the top and do the same thing. Okay. And then I'm going to add this little rose piece of die cut too and really ink those edges good. Oh, there's that thunder. I need to hold my corners down for just a minute because they're still wanting to pop up. Cute. That is so pretty. Let's go ahead and just use Fabric Fix because I've got it out. And I've got cheesecloth all over my hands. Ooh, sorry. Sorry for the bumpity bump. Okay, I finally got that down. Adhering things to cheesecloth is not the easiest thing in the world. Note to self. Uh, I decided I want one more element on my front cover. Maybe one other thing too, we'll see. Once I get this down, ink my edges. And I apologize for my fingers. I have glue, ink, and now cheesecloth bits everywhere. I'm going to put this kind of under the cheesecloth there. I really like that. Get my adhesive. Kind of put that at a slant there. Cute. I like that. And maybe a few little blingy bits if they'll come off of my fingers. <laughs> okay. There's one. I think I'll just do them in a row there. <laughs> oh, man. If they'll cooperate, maybe I will put them in a row here. Just kind of around that little oval that I put on there. Pull that one up some and go where I wanted it to go. I like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there is our second little notebook that has a tuck and kind of looks like a file folder. Can't get my voice all cleared up. We did recording yesterday for 10 hours for our new project. And so I guess my voice has decided you're not going to talk anymore. So, I'll have to end this video, but that is about what I wanted to show you. Anyways, I thought I would try to get one more done, but 
think I need to go get me some water and rest my voice for a minute. Um, so there are my two different ones. This one I did off camera and did you a little prototype. You are welcome. You hardly ever get a prototype with me. And then here is the other one. This one's a little heavier because it's got some more stuff in the tuck and it's got <clears throat> more papers in the little notepad. Um, I did say that I wanted to decorate that, didn't I? Let's see. Oh, well, I'll have it decorated in the, um, still shot that I show you at the end of the video, okay? I'll I'll decorate that with something. But there are our little tuck notepads or tuck notebooks, notebooks with tucks that look like file folders. I'll have some kind of ingenious title for this video for y'all. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Y'all have a blessed day. I will see you in the next video. <clears throat> voice permitting. <laughs> Y'all have a great day. Bye.